Welcome back to another Cheapo Multimeter Review. Yes, Cheapo Multimeter Review time. My favorite time. And I know it's your favorite time too. I cannot get over just how popular these Cheapo Multimeter Reviews are. You guys just love them. And you know what? I'm happy because so do I. Gosh, I love multimeters and especially cheap ones. Okay, in the spotlight today, an Anning AN8203 Pocket True RMS Multimeter with a few surprises. Let's take a look. Something I find a little bit, well, it just kind of creeps me out actually, is when you open up the multimeter case, you always see this. Thank you very much for purchasing our digital multimeter. Now, I don't know about you, but that just creeps me the hell out. Below, we have the wonderful specs. So at a glance, you do see what your meter can and cannot do. Um, no, sorry, you can't walk. This Annie did not ship with a box. It strictly came in a crappy piece of bubble wrap and it did come with the user manual. Manual is very verbose, very um, to the point. Not much going on here. Now, as most pocket meters have, the leads are permanently attached to the housing. And in this case, they have a little nifty clip. Click on it, release, and you have access to the probes. Now these probes are, eh, I'm gonna say, a little on the interesting side, yeah. I'm expecting a little bit better quality, but this is a cheap, cheapo multimeter. So eh, I guess to be expected. The leads do actually have a gauge wire rating on them. It's a, God, that's so small. I believe that is a two, five AWG rating, 600 volt. Um, yeah, anyway, there you go. Stand corrected, that is a two, six AWG rating. Thank God for magnifying glasses. <sighs> On the front, we do see the different cat ratings. We see 500 volts max, and they also say ADC, ACDC 600 volts max. Maybe somebody didn't get the memo. Turn it on. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. And it beeps at you. Does everything except swear at you. No, it just beeps at you. And right away you are in volts AC when you're starting from. Surprisingly, the selector switch is actually not too shabby. Hmm, wasn't expecting that. There is no backlight, however, the screen is fairly crisp and really shouldn't have any problems reading it in most general lighting conditions. Also at the top left, you notice we do have a hold as well as a rel feature. And when you are in frequency or duty cycle, that also changes the ranges in that selector. On the right hand side, we do have that range selector as well. Overall, the plastics that they've used do tend to feel a little bit on the cheap side. But once again, this is a cheapo multimeter, so really to be expected. Starting things off, we are in the 250 millivolt, and you can see we are showing 249.9. This precision reference has been heating up for about 15 minutes, so we are fairly close. Hey, not bad for a cheapo, 249.9. Next up, we should be seeing 2.50 volts. Hey, spot on, 2.501 volts. We are currently in resistance now. I have used these leads for a little while, with the ending, and I have to say, I do wish they were a little bit bigger. Um, just a little bit on the small side for my hands, and yeah, just uh, a little awkward. Anyway, here we go. This is a 0.5 ohm resistor. Now, before I do that, let's see if we need to roll out those leads. 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Oh, okay, that's pretty close, so we'll keep it as such. Here's a 0.5 ohm resistor. 0.7, 0 0.6, and if we minus that 0.1, we know we are spot on. Next up, we're gonna look at a 22 mega ohm resistor, 5% tolerance. Here we go. And giving us about 23 mega ohm. Fairly fast, looks good. 
Diode mode is next on the agenda. And we're gonna start off with your standard diode. And that looks good to me. Next up, it's LED testing mode. Here we go, starting off with the green LED. Looking good over the yellow. Hey, with a forward voltage drop. Let's try the red. Nice and bright, there we go. Over to the blue. Awesome. Wow, is it gonna do five for five? Yes, it is. We have illumination in the nation and the forward voltage drop, five for five. Wow, hey, I'm impressed. Let's take a look at the forward voltage output in dialed mode for the Anning AN8203. We have a solid 3.24, I'm sorry, 3.25 volts. Great. No problems in AC mode, a solid 121 volts coming on the main power line. Now this boasts a capacitance mode with a maximum range of 10 millifarad. Actually, they say 9,999, but for gosh sakes, can we just say 10? Oh. So let's see if this puppy can do 10 millifarad. Here we go. I have not tested this previously, so I'm as excited as you are. Already it is searching. We are getting that visual indicator, which is nice. It is thinking. We're in millifarad mode. Come on, baby. There we go, 9.5 millifarad. It took a little while, but we are there. Looking good. I know, I know, what the heck. This is a 47 millifarad. I thought, let's give it a try. Why not? Oh my God. Hey, check that out. It worked. I'm a little shocked, but uh, it can read a 47,000 microfarad or 47 millifarad cap and 42.8, 44.23. Awesome. Let's, uh, wow. I'm impressed. Checking that same cap with the Excel van and uh, yeah, showing just under 41 millifarad. So good job, Anang. Wow. I'm impressed. Oh, you guys know I like to live on the edge. Here's a 100 millifarad capacitor. Is it gonna do it? Can I put the probes on? Oh, wow. Ah, come on. Don't be shy. Oh. Alrighty, here we go. It is thinking. Thinking, thinking. And, oh, oh, oh. Can 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 We are out of luck, folks. Okay, well, you know what? Hey, we tried, right? You know what? 47 millifarad is pretty darn good. We are in frequency mode right now. We're showing 60 hertz, and we just hit the button, and we have 50% duty cycle. Next up is a high voltage test. Boy, I hope I don't hurt this little guy, because I'm really liking him. Now this has a uh, maximum voltage capacity rating of 600 volts AC DC. And I'm gonna go a little bit further. I'm gonna take it up to a thousand, see how well this little guy does, how it handles that voltage. And let's see if there's any sort of audible alarm when we go over the 600 volt threshold. Okay, here we go. Just over a thousand volts and we are getting that high voltage alarm. Try that one more time. Awesome. So no pop, snap, crackle, pop. And hey, I'm impressed. Next up, it's continuity time. Here we go. Hey, that was fairly loud. And you know what? Not too shabby. Hmm. This thing is impressing me. Seventy-three point one is the decibel rating for the Anning A and A two zero three. That is the highest decibel rating thus far. 
The Thanang has really surprised me, surprisingly. Now it's time to go under the hood. To open up the battery compartment, we do have that one Phillips screw right here. Taking a look inside, first of all, we see no shielding. <gasps> Quite an interesting uh, disassembly, actually. There was not any other screws to unscrew. You just had to simply and carefully pry it apart ever so slowly, and then success. So, interesting. Now, if we're taking a look initially, we don't see a heck of a lot here. We see one simple oscillator down here, and uh, the speaker, a piezo, and one small PTC. Here are all the vias on the side of the PCB, and we've got a lot, count them, one, two, three, four, five screws. So, um, yeah, let's go on the other side. Alrighty, so four more screws to undo, and we are in, baby, we are in. Take it around, oh, very nice. So I'm just gonna be carefully pry up. So the battery housing, there we are. So, all right, let's start off with this side of things. There we have the um, nice rubber buttons and the uh, tracks for the selector switch, total of six. Here are the uh, AAA compartment. And there's the zebra strip over here. Elastomar, and that is what feeds the LCD display. Now let's turn the PCB around and check it out. Alrighty, so on the other side here we have the uh, rotary selector switch tracks. They are greased and lubed really, really well, and that's a good thing. So that shows that Anning is giving a little attention to detail here, and they know that a little bit of lubrication is going to help the wear and tear in the long run, so that's good to see. Generally speaking, the overall condition of the PCB is very nice, very clean, uh, no flux, no crappy soldering or cold joints. All in all, I'm liking what I'm seeing. And uh, this is the uh, cobbed IC, but if you take a look at this guy right here, that is a 24C02A. And uh, you guessed it, that's the two kilobyte EEP ROM that stores all the config file for this guy. And chances are, because that is the, t uh, the 24C02A, this is probably that DreamTech DTM0660 IC. And that's probably why we had that incredible capacitance range because this ID IC does a heck of a lot and uh, it's cheap it's in so many of the cheaper multimeters these days and even some of the more expensive multimeters if you, re you recall uh, I believe the Unity uh, UT195 also uh, had a version of the uh, DreamTech IC as its main microcontroller so very popular IC does a lot and uh, does a lot really really well Looking at the fabrication date, we have a uh, fab on the PCB of October 11th, 2014. It looks like version 3. So uh, initial design was about 4 or 5 years ago. Not much else going on. This is a no-frills multimeter, really. Uh, no funky stuff, no flashlights, no NCV, none of these uh, bells and whistles. Just your basic multimeter. Okay, but I'm going to put everything back together and come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the adding A and A203. Wow, this is a very nice cheapo multimeter. What can I say? It did that amazing capacitance range of 47 millifarad, only rated at 10 millifarad. Yeah, I did try 100 millifarad, no can do, but hey, you know what? Pushing 50 millifarad five times its own uh, rated capacity is great. It's also super cheap in terms of battery consumption. We're talking about 2.1 milliamp hours. It works out to about 400 hours of battery life on a good day. 300, 350 at a minimum. Can't argue with that. Now, yeah, it does not do current, not even milliamps. Kind of sucks, I know, but it is what it is. It's a really good, accurate little pocket multimeter. Well built with a pretty decent IC and hey, I've got nothing bad to say about it. I'm gonna give the Anning ANA203 a solid four out of five stars. Keep those comments coming. 
any questions, queries, you name it, please drop me an email. I'm always ready for a chat. Till the next time, keep on testing. <laughs>